My name's Zoe Laidlaw and I teach the history of Britain's Empire uh, here at Royal Holloway. And the teaching that I do derives from my research on Britain's Empire in the 19th century. I think one of the reasons that I became interested in history was that I grew up in Australia in the 1980s and 1990s when we in Australia were just starting to confront the consequences of British imperialism for Indigenous Australians. So lots of my research on the 19th century British Empire, while it seems quite divorced from where we are in the 21st century, actually is really important to me because understanding where we've come from is going to help us uh, work out where we should go in the future. And I think that all the students who study with me probably be infected by um, my enthusiasm, my commitment to understanding Britain's imperial past better. So I lead an independent essay research group, which is usually consists of about 10 second year students who are working to develop their own uh, research topic, examining some aspect of slavery or anti-slavery. And after they've done their research, they turn this into a 5,000 word essay. And we start off with some seminars, thinking about the big questions that um, connect to slavery and opposition to slavery. Why did people change their minds about whether slavery was a good or a bad thing? What sort of tactics did they use? How were enslaved people uh, brought into the fight against slavery? Obviously they were rebelling quite frequently and um, taking up more forms of more passive resistance, working slowly, trying not to work at all, doing bad work. But how were they brought into this British campaign against slavery as a system? So students look at all sorts of different types of evidence. Um, some of these include things like slave narratives, where we've got the testimony of slaves talking about the horrors and the, um, the difficulties that they encountered, what, what an enslaved life was like. Uh, we have other types of evidence, which include things like petitions, uh, the development of logos uh, and slogans, uh, boycotts of slave manufacturers and slave-grown uh, goods like sugar and cotton and tobacco. All of these were tactics that opponents of slavery deployed in the early 19th century. Um, and we think of them today as kind of well-worn uh, tactics that people who are protesting about anything might deploy. But lots of these tactics were honed by the anti-slavery activists. Other students choose to focus on some of the intellectual debates that were going on about slavery, about its morality, about the economics of slavery. Was it really profitable to force people to work um, when they were quite resistant to doing that work? M might, in fact, free labour be much more efficient for everybody? So there's all sorts of angles you can take depending on um, the style of history and the questions that interest you most. One of the courses that I teach here at Royal Holloway is called The Empire in Victorian Britain and it starts in the 1830s and runs through to the 1870s. And these 40 years or so really follow on from the success of emancipation or the freeing of the slaves. And they look at what went wrong for people who are very optimistic about their capacity to reform the empire um, and to, rather idealistically, they, um, they hoped to create an empire where white settlers from Britain and indigenous peoples could exist side by side, could, could coexist and get along. So I think that something that students who come and study history at Royal Holloway benefit from is not just the opportunity to study the, the British Empire, the formal empire, but to really focus in and look at different parts of the empire, perhaps focusing on Pakistan or India, um, or looking beyond the formal boundaries of empire, say to China, where my colleagues offer courses on how British influence really affected what was going on in that vast empire in its own terms, even though Britain's formal possessions really only extended to Hong Kong. So if you come here and study with us, you get the chance to think about this world system and the kind of patchwork quilt of attitudes, understandings, different territories, peoples, um, violent resistance and enthusiastic jingoism as well. Uh, and 
I think that's an extraordinarily rich opportunity for people who study with us.